This lecture is also about probability distributions, but we're going to apply probability distributions that we've seen to some examples much more specifically. And I'm going to show you how this works with hypothesis testing and the probability distributions. This is really critical to get. So if you're not getting this, ask lots of questions in class, come to office hours, etc. So to do this, let's look at an applied example of how we might use probability distributions to help us answer a question, or at least give us some probabilities with certain assumptions for answers to a question, which isn't quite the same thing. Let's say Concha schedules eight dates with Fred, and he misses seven of them. And each time he says, oh, my car broke down. So Concha decides that she's going to apply some rational logic to this, and she says, okay, how can we figure out how likely it is that Fred is telling me the truth? She says, okay, let's assume that his car breaks down half the time, that any given time he goes to start his car, he has a 50-50 chance that it will start that day. And if it doesn't start that day, then it just won't start at all. And let's just leave aside the assumptions of whether he can get to a phone and call her or something like that. Uh, let's just talk about the car. Let's, she says, okay, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say, what if his car is a terrible car? And she thinks, okay, a terrible car would be a 50% starting car. So what's the probability that he would have this big string of bad luck. So devil's advocate here. All right, Fred, maybe you're telling the truth. Then what's the probability, if you're telling the truth and if your car has a 50% probability of breaking down each time, that it would have broken down, broken down seven or eight times out of eight tries? So he said seven, but you have to account for the possibility that if he's telling the truth, it might have also broken down eight times. So you gotta account for that too. So seven or more times. So the theoretical probabilities are this probability table, this binomial uh, distribution that we saw in the previous example, 256 possibilities. It's just exactly like tossing a coin eight times. If starting his car is like tossing a coin, well, then we can use coin tossing to model what's going on here. This is a model of one possibility here, or one set of possibilities. We can look at these things. Here are the probabilities of seven breakdowns or eight. And instead of successes, I said breakdowns here. You don't really need starts. You just need one of these columns. So seven or eight successes, seven or eight events that we're interested in out of eight, out of eight total. Well, exactly seven is about a 3% chance and exactly eight is about a 0.4% chance. So looking at a graph of this, this is what it looks like. This is a graph of the, the binomial probability distribution for eight coin tosses essentially for eight tries uh, with 50-50 probability either way. It's pretty small. It gives you a graphical idea. So the probability of the of seven and the eight together is only 0.035. So three and a half percent probability, 0 0.03, well, 0 0.04. Is he lying? Well, we can't know for sure. And this is like hypothesis testing really, but we can give some probabilities here. We can give some conditional probabilities. If his car truly breaks down 50% of the time, then it's pretty unlikely that it would break down seven or more out of eight tries. We know exactly how unlikely. So the model is extremely specific. It says 50% probability. We know what that looks like. We know what tossing coins 50% looks like with uh, you know infinite coin tossing and pure theoretical probability. That's the beauty of a model applied to this is that it's a well-known thing. And then we apply it to real life and we try and guess how good do we think this fits? So how unlikely is it? Three and a half percent. So there's a three and a half percent or lower probability that should happen if Fred's car is as bad as 50% terrible. Of course, maybe his car's worse. Maybe Conscious not giving his car the true credit for being the piece of crap that it really is. You never know. I've had these cars. Sometimes you have to give them the benefit of, the, of many doubts. So if he's telling the truth and his car breaks down half the time or less, then there's only a three and a half percent chance that he would have had this happen. It's pretty low. Now you never get zero, zero, so Concha just has to decide what her level of comfort is with making decisions. She has to decide what her alpha, did, alpha is because we just did hypothesis testing. No hypothesis would be Fred is telling the truth with the assumption that the probability of a breakdown is 0.5. The alternative would be Fred is lying and the probability of a breakdown is even less, is less than 0.5, but he doesn't want to say that because, you know, he just is jerking to go and try around, right? So the data, we have seven breakdowns or apparent breakdowns in eight tries, or seven reports from Fred might be a good way to put it. And the probability of everything happening if what Fred is saying is true and with the assumption of 0.5 probability on each try of, of the car not starting, the, the p-value is 
So if you set your alpha at 0.05, then you would reject the null hypothesis and you would say, pretty sure, Fred, you're lying to me. So that's how we use probability distributions to answer questions in statistics. That was just a very straightforward walkthrough of what happens when we use statistical processes to answer these kinds of questions using distributions. And we're always using these distributions, it seems. We're going to talk about distributions for the whole rest of the semester. So now just a quick run through, looking at the way probability distributions work. Um, let's say you roll a one on a single die and probability, oops, Actually, this is supposed to be hidden because I didn't want to do this here. Okay, skip past that. We might do that in class someday. So prob probability tables, binomial tables for different values of P. Now, P is the probability on a single uh, trial of a quote-unquote success. So let's look at trials of 20 times, tossing a coin 20 times, essentially. Any random process that has a yes or no, this or that kind of outcome, you can specify the probability of each of those outcomes, and it's the same every time. Every one of those uh, repeated 20 times, and this kind of time, the probability of a success is 0.1. So it's like having a biased coin, an, an unfair coin that only comes up heads 10% of the time. So that's the distribution. Now the distribution starts to shift when, the, when heads come up 20% of the time. Those are the probabilities. Here's 30%. You can see where this is going, right? 40%. Now with 50%, p equals 0.5, when the, we have a fair coin. Now if we if we increase the number of uh, trials here, so this is 20 tosses of a coin, if we went up to 100 or 1,000 or a million, if we went to an infinite number of trials, essentially we would have the beautiful bell-shaped normal distribution. But let's keep making the coin more and more biased towards heads. Now this is a 60% probability heads. It's getting skewed, right? It's negatively skewed, 70%. 80% and 90% and we'll end there for now.